Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to your next lesson in Equations and Inequalities. Um, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at what is called K substitution. And they call it K substitution is because we're going to use the letter K to substitute for something in more complex equations. But you don't have to use the letter K, but if they say to solve this using K substitution, you'll know what we're talking about. So let's look at an example. We have this horrible looking equation that says x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x equals 2. And if you look at this and you think, oh, I've got to get the denominator, get rid of the denominator, which means I have to find a common denominator. And if I do that, that goes up to x to the 4. And it just becomes really scary. But there's a little trick that we can use. And this trick is called case substitution. Do you see that this over here is exactly the same as that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go let k equal x squared minus 2x. Now wherever I see an x squared minus 2x, I'm going to substitute the letter k. So we got k minus 3 over k equals 2. And do you agree now that this sum looks so much easier? It just looks ridiculously easier. So we're going to solve for this. The first thing you need to realize is that this is actually k over 1, so we're going to get a common denominator of k on the left hand side. So let's do that. So go 1 goes into k, k times k times k is k squared, minus k goes into k once, that leaves you with a 3, is equal to 2. To get rid of this k on the bottom, what do we do? We times both sides by k over 1. Right, so therefore what do we have? We've got that this becomes, this cancels with this, and we end up with k squared minus 3 is equal to 2k. Now I can rearrange this to become k squared minus 2k minus 3 equals 0. And ah, oh, look at that, that is a very nice, easy to solve quadratic. We've got two brackets, we've got k, k, and remember, how do we solve this? We want factors of 3 that when we add up, they add up to 2, and when we multiply is 3, and it's really easy because in this case, the factors of 3 are just 3 and 1 because it's a prime number. So we've got 3 and 1, and we want it to be a negative number, so it's going to be negative 3, and we're going to have plus 1 equals 0. So therefore, k is equal to negative 1 or k equals 3. Now you have to be careful at this point because people often make this mistake then go oh we're finished we solved the problem but no we're not because we weren't asked to solve for k we were asked to solve for x so we now need to take this and substitute this back into here. So I'm going to use a different color just so that you don't get confused. Uh, let's use green. So now we've got that either minus 1 equals x squared minus 2x or 3 equals x squared minus 2x. So now we have to solve this, so we go 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1, or we've got x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And I'm just going to solve this side and then we'll go back to that side over there. So this side we're going to get, have the beautiful quadratic factorization where we've got very easy x and x and the only factors of 1 are 1 and 1. Both the signs have to be the same and they both have to be negative so it's minus and minus equals 0. Therefore we can say x equals 1 or, wait for it, x equals 1. And if we go to this side, we've got or, and do you see that that's exactly the same as this one over here? So therefore we've got x minus 3, x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore we've got x equals 3, or x equals minus 1. So in fact, in this question here, we actually have four potential solutions. Which makes sense because if we had solved it normally, we would have ended up with an x to the 4 over here, which would have resulted in 4 roots. So that is the correct answer. And again, you can substitute in to check that it's right, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that for you to do just to make sure. So do you see that if you can see something very scary looking like this, but then you can see expressions that are the same, we can substitute for them. Okay, let's try another example. 
Okay, so here we've got x squared minus 2x all squared minus 8 is equal to 7 times by x squared minus 2x. So they've made it very easy for us to see the ones that are the same, the expressions that are the same, because they've put them in brackets. Okay, so now again we're going to let k equal x squared minus 2x. Therefore we've got k squared minus 8 is equal to 7 k. Ah, but now it makes it very easy because now we've got k squared minus 7k minus 8 equals 0. And we can factorize that and it becomes k and k. We want factors of 8 that give us, when they add up, they give us a 7 and when they multiply, they give us a 1. Let's try 8 and 1. It's the easiest one. 8 and 1, the difference between them is 7 and 8 times 1 is 8. So that works. So we've got minus 8. 8 because we want a negative 7 and we've got plus 1. Therefore k is equal to negative 1 or k is equal to 8. Right, but again we're not finished. We need to substitute this back into here. And again I'm just going to change colors so that you can see the different part of the sum. So therefore we've got minus 1 equals x squared minus 2x or we've got 8 equals x squared minus 2x. If I take that across, I've got 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we can factorize that nicely. We've got x and x. Factors of 1 are 1 and 1. And both the signs need to be the same because that's a plus and they both have to be minus equals 0. Therefore, we've got x equals 1 or x equals 1. Or if we look at this one, we've got or 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay, so now we need to factorize this. Again, we've got two brackets. Our factors of 8 are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. We want factors that when we multiply them give us 8, which we've done because we've got the factors, but when we add or subtract them give us 2. 8 minus 1 gives me 7 and 1 minus 8 gives me minus 7, so that's not going to work. Okay, 2 plus 4 gives me 6, but 4 minus 2 gives me a 2. So those are the factors that we're going to use and we just need to work out now which way we're going to use it. So that's an x and that's an x. Okay, the signs have to be different because that is a negative, so we've got a minus and a plus. And because we want minus 2, we're going to go minus 4 plus 2, so that becomes a minus and that becomes a plus. Therefore, we've got x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, we've got x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to 4. So those are our four solutions, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right, starting to get to grips with the k substitution, right? Let's try another one. Okay, so this one's a little bit more complicated because they haven't been nice to us and bracketed things off, all of them off. So I know that your natural reasoning would be to multiply this out and then solve for it, which you could do. That's not a problem. But since this is in the section of k-substitution, I'm starting to think I may have to look at k-substitution. So do you see that this x squared minus 4x is exactly the same as that except that this is the opposite way around? And that's called a switch round. Okay? So in other words, we could say that is kind of the same as that. So let's let k equal x squared minus 4x. Okay, so do you agree therefore that minus k would equal minus x squared minus 4x, which would therefore equal minus x squared plus 4x, which is the same as that. If I rearrange this, this becomes 4x minus x squared. So that there is the same as minus k. Right, so then we can substitute in. We've got k plus 10 minus 7 times minus k is equal to negative 2. Okay, so we've got k plus 10 minus times minus is a plus, so plus 7k 
equals negative 2. I'm taking it very slowly. k plus 7k is 8k. So we've got 8k is equal to negative 2 minus 10. So 8k is equal to negative 12. Therefore k is equal to minus 12 over 8, which is going to be minus, if we divide that by 4, becomes 3 over 2. Therefore, we can say that, if we then substitute into this, we can say, and I'm going to change pen color again, we can say that minus 3 over 2 is equal to x squared minus 4x, right? Therefore, 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3 over 2. Okay, I really don't like that 2 at the bottom, so I'm going to multiply everything by the 2. So I've got 2x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 0. And now we need to factorize this. And the way we factorize this is we now have a number in front. So we can't just write x and x. We have to think about this. So the factors of 2 are 2 and 1. And the factors of 3 are 3 and 1. 1 and 3 times 2 is 6 and 1 times 1 is 1 so that's not going to work and if we do 3 and 1 that's going to be 3 times 1 2 times 1 is 1 it's not going to work so we have to use wait for it we have to use the formula so we are going to use the formula to solve this problem okay so let us get out our color back again right the formula states x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now grade 11 it is on your formula sheet so you don't have to worry about memorizing it although you will find it probably faster and easier if you do with practice find yourself memorizing this. So now let us just list what we have just to make it easier for ourselves. So a is going to be 2 b is, remember the coefficient, is going to be minus 8 and c is 3. So now we're going to substitute into this. So now we've got x is equal to minus minus 8 plus or minus the square root of minus 8 squared minus 4 times by 2 times by 3 all over 2 times by a which is 2. So therefore we've got minus times minus is plus, that's 8, plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, I mean 8 squared is 64, minus 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 times 4 is 24, yes, all over 4. So therefore x is going to be 8 plus or minus the square root of 40 all over 4. And then we can just pop this in our calculator. You can, if you want, realize that this is going to be, we can cancel the 4 and make that a 1 and that a 2. So that becomes 2 plus or minus the square root of 40. And then we get out our calculator. There we go. And we say, okay, fine, we want 2 plus the square root of 40. And that is going to be 8.32. So the answer is going to be either 8.32 or, or it's going to be 2 minus the square root of 40 and it becomes minus 4.32, minus 4.32. So do you see that, that those are the two options, those are the two roots for x for this problem. Okay, you could have multiplied this out and solved it and not have to use case substitution. I'm just showing you different ways which case substitution can be used. You need to do what's best for you, what you find the easiest. Right, now we look at the next example and again the next example looks very scary. I mean if we multiplied that out over there we'd end up with a horrible term if we want to get rid of that denominator. But if we realize that these guys look the same, then we can say let k equal x squared plus 2x minus 12. So then we've got 9 over k is equal to k. If we multiply that out, we've got 9 is equal to k squared. 
And now I know that you guys are naturally, naturally, naturally just going to go, oh, therefore k equals 3. It's not just 3. So therefore I want to show you something. I want you to realize you can go 0 is equal to k squared minus 9. Therefore 0 is equal to k minus 3, k plus 3 because it's a difference of two squares. And therefore k is equal to 3 or a minus 3. Guys, if you just go, oh, look, square root, square root, and then you get just k equals 3, you're going to lose half of your answer, which is terrible. Okay, so you need to realize this. Now, if you know that the square root of k is going to be plus or minus, you don't have to do these two steps. But honestly, it is better. I have my tricks in final exams that make silly mistakes like this just because they're in a hurry to get the sum done. Right, now that we've got k equals 3 or k equals minus 3, we can again substitute into here. And again, I'm just going to change my color again. So we therefore have either the 3 equals x squared plus 2x minus 12, or, or we have, and let's use this color, or we have that minus 3 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 12. So let's just carry on with this one. Let's solve it. So we've got 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 12 plus 3, which becomes x squared plus 2x minus 9. Now the factors of 9 are 9 and 1 and 3 and 3, and either way we're not going to get a 2. So we're going to have to use the formula again. So we've got x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a which becomes b is 2 so it's minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared is 4 minus 4 coefficient of x squared is 1 and c is minus 9 all over 2 times 1 which becomes minus 2 plus or minus the square root of again 40 because 4 times 9 is 36 but minus times minus plus all over 2 therefore we've got minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 40 and we can get out our calculator and we can go minus 1 plus the square root of 40 um, 40 equals 5.32 so therefore the answer is x is equal to 5.32 or if we get out our calculator again we've got minus 1 minus the square root of 40 which is going to be minus 7.32 minus 7.32 but remember we haven't finished we now have to still do all this one so let's go back and let's change the ink color back to here so here we go this one here becomes 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 12 minus 3 therefore 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15 the factors of 15 quite nicely are 1 and 4 15 and 3 and 5 and remember we want factors that give us a difference of 2 and luckily for us 3 and 5 do therefore 0 is equal to x okay and we've got an x here and we have a 5 and a 3 and because this is a minus we know that they have to be different and we want this to be a plus 2 so we want it to be plus 5 minus 3 Therefore, x is equal to 3 or x is equal to minus 5. So again, we've got four solutions, those four over there. Right. Okay. Right, grade 11s, so you guys need to go and practice case substitution. But again, you don't always have to use it. But if you see something like scary, especially something like this, where if you multiplied out those x squared, you're going to get x to the 4s and everything else. That's just terrible. So then you use substitution. And remember, you don't have to use the letter k. We just use it because it is the normal um, substitution that we use. Have a lovely day. Go practice, practice, practice as always, and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Bye.